This video will demonstrate how to perform the labs that are in your My IT Lab account. Um, you should have already purchased and, and registered yourself in the My IT with a My IT Lab account. All of that is posted in your syllabus. So I'm just going to bring it up. And on uh, the last few pages on your syllabus explains how to purchase the My IT access code. So right here how to register for My IT Lab account. You can purchase the access code either at the bookstore, either on or off campus, or online. Um, if you, either way, if you put, um, either way you're going to start here at the section that says get registered and go through all of these steps and it will show you here also how to purchase it online. You also can have the option here to select a 14 day trial basis, uh, temporary access if you're waiting on financial aid. Um, or if for, for some reason you think you won't complete the course. So go, you, you should have gone through all these steps. And then um, and then what you want to do is I'm going to show you how to directly go into your My IT account most of the time the link for you to log in will be posted in your lab assignment. I'm going to show you how to get to it um, to the MIT Labs just straight from your browser. Now it's highly recommended you use your Google Chrome browser. Um, if you do not have Google Chrome, all you have to do it's a browser which is software that hooks you up to the internet. You can download it for free if you just go to Google, and right here, just go to Google, you can browse, I mean, you can search, download Google Chrome. Make sure you go to a legitimate website, such as www.google.com forward slash Chrome. Make sure you're not going to some malicious site where you might get some garbage. So make sure it's legitimate such as google.com uh, forward slash chrome. Um, if you click on it you're going to see you can download it for free. So that is the best browser <coughs> to work with. You can have download here. That's the best browser to work with these labs with. So down here I already have it downloaded so I'm just going to go into Google Chrome Then, um, if you type in myitlab.com, that's the website you want to go to. It will change the URL up here. It will change, but the easiest way is to remember is to myitlab.com. M Y I T L A B dot com. Uh, you typically, you'll go here to the sign in. <clears throat> But you'll see through the syllabus, in order to register, you're going to have to go through these steps. So this is these are the steps to do after you've registered. You'll click Sign In. We're using Microsoft Office 2013. If you perform these labs <clears throat> and for some reason they're they're not they're not acting right, um, what you want to do here is run a browser tune-up. You can use Mozilla Firefox also. Um, they'll work even in Internet Explorer, but just not as well. So, if you're having difficulties with the labs, they're not acting right, if you click here, run your browser tune-up, you might want to do this the first time. There again, we're doing Microsoft Office 2013. Click that link. And when you click here to run the browser tune-up, click on this link here. And if you're running a Windows-based computer, then click here on, uh, you can watch the video, it's going to show you demonstration of how to do this, or here's some instructions to read, but if you're running 
a Windows computer, then you want to run the browser here for the PC. If and then people using a Mac, you, you might want to do this right off the bat. Um, you can click here. Well, you may want to watch the video first, or look at the instructions, or even print them out. But you're going to run want to run the browser tune up for the Mac. Now this is only if you're having problems. Um, if you're not, you're just going to go straight into click on Microsoft Office 2013. You should have already registered and set your account up following the steps on the syllabus. And you will sign in. You should see your section of the course here, CSCI 1300 Intro Computing. And um, I've got several sections of this class, so you should only see yours. You may be the 9 o'clock, you may be the 10 o'clock, but you should only have that one link there. It will take you into, should take you straight to the course materials, and that's where all the labs are going to be posted right off the bat. Now, you're going to see a lot of things here on the left-hand side from my screen that you won't see on yours. I'm in the logged in as an instructor, so you're, you're going to see extra things. Basically, you're probably just going to see course materials and grades. Course materials are where your labs are going to be posted. This first link called eText is the entire textbook for this course. If you click on it, you have the option to view it on your iPad if you have one. You have, uh, this is the go all in one. This is probably the link you're going to be using. If for some reason you would want a printed copy of this book, you can click on this print upgrade and I think it's $35. You should be fine using the e-text. So click on that link. If I click here to access it, this will show you page by page your course textbook. So here's the cover. This just takes you page by page. I prefer to view it looking two pages at the same time, a two-page view, and this would just be just like if you're in a normal textbook and you're opening the pages. So this is the textbook, the chapters. Um, you're going to see, you know, literacy exams are in here, the literacy chapters. Uh, so this is how you just go through the textbook. So that's your e-text. Okay, I'm going to close that out. I'm going to go back to Course Materials. Okay, so this is where your labs would appear. So if this is your first lab, um, your syllabus will tell you which lab you're on by looking at the dates. Also, there should be a link in the assignments in Blackboard that will show you, tell you which lab you're on. So let's say we're on the very first Word lab. Let's click on it. Typically, you will have a training lab and an exam lab. And also, I will post the chapter e-text that you need um, for the particular concepts you're learning. So this, even though you have back here your entire textbook, in each lab, whatever chapter in that e-text is pertaining to what steps you're doing, I will post that. So this is just chapter uh, 7 if you need to refer to it. So what you'll do is click on the first link, which is the training. Now, when you're performing these training and exam labs, you do not have to have Word on your computer. This is just a simulation program. When you do a project is when you will have to have the real Word software. So for any of these simulated training and exam labs, it does not matter whether you have a Microsoft Office on your computer. You don't have to have the software, only when there's a project. And 
whenever I assign you a project, I will say, okay, this is when you have to be in the real application. So when you get in here, you're going to see a lot of things here on the right-hand side of your screen, or if you're using a different browser, you may see it at the bottom of your screen. It's going to tell you the tasks to be performed. So there again, it may be here on the right-hand side. Don't be surprised if all of this appears at the bottom of the screen. Um, we're, the first thing we need to do is change the left and right margins to one inch. So perform that task. I'm going to click on Page Layout. I'm going to go to Margins. We'll go all the way to the bottom to Custom Margins. And I need to change the left margin to one and the right margin to one. And then click OK. And I got the question correct. Notice here. I have seven tasks I have to perform. I performed the first one, now I'm on the second one. Each task you have 10 attempts to get it correct or not. Um, you have a view all button. When I do view all, it will show me all of the tasks that I have to perform so I can skip around. If I don't like that task, I can come down here to um, Inserting a picture, I can click on that one and go straight to that task. So I can pull all the tasks up and look at them. So right here, I want to position the insertion point at the beginning of the paragraph this summer. So right here, and I insert a picture file named something something bird from the flash drive. So I'm going to go up here on my ribbon, click on the insert tab. In the illustration section, click on pictures. This is the file that they want, and it's coming from, it's already defaulting to the, the USB drive, and then click Insert. I got it correct. Um, it goes to the next step. So when you skip around, you'll notice it will say you got this correct, this is correct, this is incomplete, meaning I looked at it, but I didn't finish it. This is incomplete because I'm on this one. These haven't even been attempted. So you can always jump around and see which tasks you've already performed and which you haven't. Okay, this one says dra uh, drag the bottom corner sizing handle here on the picture slightly up to the left so that the bottom edge of the picture aligns with the four inch on the vertical ruler. The vertical ruler, I'm going to go back. The vertical ruler is right here. I'm looking. I need this bottom to go to the four. <clears throat> now, let's say I attempt it and I do it wrong. Watch. It says incorrect action. Notice on my attempts remaining, I've used two. Um, I may accidentally. And if, if things start looking like right now I'm trying to select it again, if I've done several things wrong and it gets confused, what you want to do like right now it looks like it's messed up, go over here and you have a reset button. So right now because I've kind of messed it up so much, click reset and it starts the question all over again. Notice it's not acting crazy again. So this is simulation and if you do several steps wrong, um, it gets confused, go over here and reset that question. So I'm going to now drag it up until I'm approximately at the four inch mark on the ruler on the very left side of my screen and let go. We want to change the picture height to 3.8 inches. So let's say um, I don't know how to do that. Down here you have a button called learning aids. If you click on it you have three ways to do this. If you click on read it's going to take you straight to the page in the book, the textbook, and it's going to show you the steps that you need to take. So that's one way. It will write here how to resize it. You can scroll down and read how to do it. Another option is when you click on your learning aids, watch. And this is my favorite. It will Using a video, you have to click the play button, demonstrate that entire step for you. Size a picture. Live layout reflows text so that you can view the placement of surrounding text. In the lower right corner of the picture, 
point to the sizing handle and you'll see that a diagonal double arrow displays. Hold down the mouse button and drag upward and to the left until the bottom of the graphic is aligned at approximately four inches on the vertical ruler. Since you use the corner sizing handle, the picture is proportionately resized. If you want to use a precise measurement to size a picture or object, you can do that too. On the ribbon under Picture Tools, click the Format tab. In the Size group, click the Shape, Height, Spin box arrows as necessary to change the height of the picture to 3.8. Okay, so now I've seen her do that. So I can go up you here and close it out. Instead of listening all the way through it, that she showed me how to do it so I can stop the video. So I'm going to click on Format. Up here on the Size, I'm going to type in 3.8 and hit Enter. So you don't have to watch or complete the entire um, the aid. The last aid here is a practice one. And what it does is, let's say I don't know how to do this step. If I do practice, you follow the steps. They'll perform them and then you have to do them. Um, it takes a little bit longer, but right now it says click the recycle bin click picture. Click the recycle bin picture. So I have to I have to click it on the pictures tab, click format, and then in the size group, click the upper right here, crop. So they make you do it by following it. Hold down and then move it over to the five inch on the ruler. Click anywhere in the document to So it tells you and you have to do it each step by step as it tells you. So it's over now, I have to do it myself. So once you've gone through that one, so that one's a little bit long and drawn out because you, you do it as they tell you, and then you have to go back and do it again. So that you will see on these learning t aids that my favorite happens to be the watch, but any one that will work. So um, at the top of the document, select the recycling picture, and then crop it, format, crop button. And I'm looking at, there again, the, the horizontal ruler is the ruler at the top. I'm going to drag it till I get to the five inch mark and then click anywhere in any white space to deselect it. Okay, I'm going to now scale the height of the picture 10% and set the text to wrapping. So there again, if I didn't know how to do it, you can click on the learning tools and either read it in the book, watch a video of it, or practice it. Uh, to do that, I'm going to click the size Diagonal button. Oh, got to select the picture first. Click the size, and then on the scale, I'm going to scale it to 10%. So I'll type in a 10. Click on the text wrapping. Select square, and OK. We're going to position the picture so that the vertical alignment is set to top relative. Okay, so on the Format tab, in the Position, go all the way down to More Layout Options. On Position, we want the Vertical, so you got to read these very carefully. We want the Alignment, so click in the Alignment button. It needs to be Top, Relative to, should be Margin, so drop down that arrow, change the page to Margin and click OK. And I'm, the question's complete. It's going to step task 6 of 7. Um, now if, if I skip a step, let's say I'm just going to move on to the next step. I don't want to do that. Um, maybe I don't want to do that. Or let's do this last one. I'm going to select all the text in the document. So a fast way to select all the text is hold your control key down and hit your A key. We're going to set the line spacing to 1.5. So up here in the paragraph group, I'm going to do 1.5. Questions complete. Now remember I skipped one earlier. When it when I got went through all seven of these, when I got to the last one, notice it's going to go back and pick up any that I skipped. Uh, so I went all the way back to step two now. Now let's say for some reason I need to stop where I'm at. 
what you always, always want to do, and this is very important, you want to click on the Save button. Notice when you click on the point to the Save button, it says Save for Later. So I'm going to click on that to Save for Later, and I'm going to say OK. Now, if you close out up here, and you've, you've only done half the steps, or you haven't finished it, if you close out, it's going to grade it. And when you go back in to finish it, it will start you all over again. You're going to lose everything. And the grade that it records is, and you can do these as many times as you want. It's unlimited how many times you can go through each one of these trainings or exams. You know, each task, you, can, you only have 10 attempts. But you can redo these as many times as you want. Never, never close out. If you do, whatever points you made at that point is what you're going to have. So always, always, anytime you get in and out of this, always save for later. Click OK. And then when you come back later, notice how it says here, in progress. When you come back into it later, let's say you just do a few questions each day, it's going to pick you up where you left off. So that is probably the most important thing you can ever do is always save for later. Now we're on probably the last one here. So we're going to select the text, all the text in the document. So I'm going to do control A. Um, we're going to set the entire uh, alignment to left. So I'm going to click on left align. Notice I got that part right, so it went to the next step. Change the font size of the first paragraph to 40, so I'm just going to select the very first line that's considered the first paragraph. On the font size, it wants to be 40, so I'm going to have to type it in. The option is not there to uh, select it. If you want to, um, let's say I keep getting this wrong. Uh, let me try it again. 40. What you can do here is notice, uh, let me do another one just wrong on purpose. A suggestion is I got that one right and in, incorrect, so I'm down to st attempt 8. Uh, got it wrong again. I'm attempt remaining 7. What you might want to do is just skip to the next question after you get down to about 5 and come back to it later. Uh, that that way you it may reset, maybe it's acting up. Um, I, you may not just want to keep using all 10 there. Just say, okay, I'm, I'm going to skip this one and come back to it because for some reason I'm just not getting it right. So do know that, you know, instead of using all the attempts, you can skip and uh, let it come back. Uh, so just trying it time after time there. Okay, I'm supposed to change this font size to a 26. And then the, I'm going to, and then we want to center both paragraphs. So this is your first paragraph, your second paragraph. We're going to center it. We're going to select each of the bolded subtitles. So I'm going to select the first title in, internship program. Scroll down and find the next one. Hold my control key down to select it. Because I, in order to select multiple lines that aren't Right and right after another, you hold your control key down and then select it. And then we want to center all three of these. Question complete. Now, um, this probably is our last step. If you finish all of your steps, if all of your questions are complete here, they say complete, but yet you should never have to hit the submit button. It should, the minute I do this last step, it should automatically come up and say, okay, you completed the assignment, click OK. If for, and it will, once in a while, not too often, it will just keep, it won't, it won't just automatically come up with that. If you see that all of these are completed and it didn't give you that option to say, okay, click OK, that you're finished, then you will have to hit the submit button. Anytime you hit the submit button, though, it grades it immediately, and that's your score you get. So right now, we're going to change this style, picture style, to wrap it square. 
And so right here, the assignment's over. Please okay, click OK to submit. If for some chance, you should never ever have to hit that submit. But for some reason, you know you're finished and you don't get this. That's the only way to get out of it and get a grade. So I'm going to click my OK to submit it. Right here, if you do not see a score, then you're not going to get one. Um, if for some reason you didn't get a score, go back into it, check, and make sure Go back in here, and mine's saying incomplete because I'm starting all over again. But if you didn't get a score, it's probably going to be hung up in here. It's probably going to, it should say all complete. You're going to hit that submit button. So more importantly than ever, make sure you see a score there. If you don't, you know, email me. Let me check into it. Uh, you may, like I said, it may be hung up, and you need to just go back in and hit that submit button. Another way to check your grades is over here on the left hand side when you click on your grades. It's going to come up with all the labs. You click on each lab and it will show your scores here. So each assignment you should see a score and it's very important that you do that. You watch for that because if you don't see it, I don't see it, it's not in your grade book. You've got to make sure you monitor that grade. Now you can do this training as many times as you want. Um, I can go in there and do it again if I want to and it will always record the highest score. Now the exam. Click on the exam. So once you do the training, you go to the exam. And the exam is identical. Um, I didn't cut the, the you're, you're just going to see the same amount of questions. Um, the exam is identical to the training. Here's your view all button. Here's your reset. Here's your questions. You can go forward and backwards. Here's how many attempts. You have 10 per task. Here's your save, your submit. The only thing you do not see is your learning aids. This is do or die. You either got a, you, you've got your 10 attempts for each task, um, but you do not have any learning aids. But what you can do, uh, you can always go back to that training and look at the video. So let's say I'm going through here doing one of these questions in the exams, and I don't know how to do it. Um, you can there again, when you get down to attempts remaining, say about five, you can, okay, this is up here, if you look at this, and it should match it. If this is step three in the exam, it's going to match it in the training. But this is changing one column of text to two. I can click here, save for later in my exam. I can go now, go back in that training, because I've already got my grade for it. Find that step. So if it's step three, I can keep going over to step three. Make sure it says the same thing. I don't have these, these set up correctly, right? Go to Learning Tools or Learning Aids and look at it. Um, and then get out of that. I mean, you can save for later. I've already got my score. I've already done graded this. So, I mean, I can't get any better than that. I don't care how many times you go in there and do that training. Whatever the highest score is is what you'll see here. Notice this has in progress. So it's going to come up, back up. Because I saved for later, I went back to the training and watched it. Now I can do that step. So that's when I say you might want to just try five attempts on a step. And if you can't do it, uh, go back to that training and watch it. So I'm going to save for later. And same with the training and the exam. You can redo these. You can do this exam as many times as you want. It's unlimited the amount of times you can do the exam. There again but you have 10 attempts per task in that exam. Okay, so um, the only other thing is the support. If you have problems, oh, one other thing, if 
if one of these, the training or the exam, when you open them, if you do not see this waiting and initializing, what you're probably going to see, depending on the browser you're using, is the browser might be uh, preventing it from a pop-up. So if you click on this and it doesn't go into that right up here, look at the top right of your screen or down here at the bottom and it may say your browser and you may see just a, um, a square with an X in it because these when you go into these trainings and labs, these are uh, labs that they're considered pop-ups. So you're, you may have to in your browser click the drop down arrow and tell it to always allow pop-ups from and you'll see it di this this URL up here. So you're going to have to tell it always allow pop-ups. So the, and this usually the first time once you tell it to always allow pop-ups, you won't have any more. But for the first time you do this, if it doesn't go into it, look up here or down here and see if your um, your browser is treating it as a pop-up block, blocking it, and then say accept it. So be careful with that. Um, if you have any issues with the the IT lab, you have a support link here. And the easiest way to get help is this 24-7 technical support. And the fastest is doing, um, here's some frequently asked questions, especially these pop-up blockers if you're having problems with it. This contact us and the chat. If you go in here, select your country, uh, <clears throat> start a live chat, usually you just type in your question and they're immediately right there. And I mean, every time I've needed help, this live chat has been a lifeline. Um, so go ahead and try the labs. And if you have any problems, contact me and good luck.